Ross on his toe, and the kick is oh, it hits. Welcome back to Motor Learning on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to be discussing augmented feedback. We're going to see two types of augmented feedback, as you can see right here, and then we'll also be discussing some schedules for that feedback. Now, you won't really ever see it referred to as extrinsic feedback, but I want to emphasize that this feedback is extrinsic. It's feedback that is not provided by the movement itself. Okay? It's not intrinsic to the movement. So let's take a look at a definition here of augmented feedback performance-related information added to or enhancing task intrinsic feedback. So what would be an example of task intrinsic feedback? Well, let me give you an example, okay? If you're doing an Olympic lift, let's say a clean and jerk, okay? Normally, um, let's say you're doing the clean part of it. Normally, if you're not gonna get the lift, if you're gonna fail at that attempt, you usually know during some point within the task, okay? You don't need a video recording. You don't need someone to tell you that you messed up. Usually in a lot of power movements, you kind of know at some point in the task if you're not going to get it before the completion of the task or before the failure. That would be task intrinsic feedback. You didn't need anybody to tell you that. You kind of just know even while the movement's going on. So it's task intrinsic. And so we could also define augmented feedback as augmenting the feedback intrinsically provided by the task, okay? Um, so for our motor task in this example, we're gonna consider kicking a field goal. And I'm sorry to any Dallas Cowboys fans, but the, the kickers for the Dallas Cowboys can't make a field goal to save their life. They can hit bombs from 60 yards out, but then you put them 10 yards in front of the field goal line and they kick it at 45 degrees. I don't know how that happens, but I've seen it. It's pretty bad, uh, pretty pretty sad actually. Um, but anyways, let's suppose this guy's going up to kick a field goal and most likely he's going to miss. Okay, and let's say he does miss. Okay, we got two types of augmented feedback: knowledge of result and knowledge of performance. Okay, so what type of augmented feedback is knowledge of results? Well, this is really just about the end result of the motor task, not anything from the start of it to the end, not anything in between, it's literally just the end result. So for a field goal, you either miss it or you make it, okay? Let's assume the guy misses it. So if someone was providing knowledge of results, augmented feedback, you would just say, well, you missed the field goal, okay? Um, in some cases, that augmented feedback could be pretty obvious. I mean, I'm pretty sure this guy can see whether or not he made the field goal after the fact, okay? Um, so in some cases, knowledge of results can be redundant. Um, but there are cases in which um, knowledge of results can be necessary, okay? I'll give you a great example of knowledge of results. Let's suppose you have a practical in one of your labs, and the instructor asks you to palpate a certain region of the body. So you go up to a partner or the instructor themselves, and you palpate that region. But the instructor does not tell you whether or not it was right or wrong. You have to actually wait like a week later to get your paper back with whether or not your palpation was correct. Well, in that case, you were not provided knowledge of results by the instructor in the moment. So that could be a case where knowledge of results is very important, um, and you might want to get that knowledge of results pretty fast. Were you right? Were you wrong? They didn't tell you. But if they did tell you, oh yeah, that you palpated that correctly, um, then that would be knowledge of results. The end result, right? Now, knowledge of performance doesn't have to do with the end result. It has to do with everything between the start and the end. So, information about the pattern of a movement. So, we could be talking about kinematic feedback, the speed, velocity, or displacement, those kind of parameters. Kinetic uh, information about the force or power, or sometimes just the quality of the movement. Sometimes, um, if you're performing an Olympic lift, sometimes your form just wasn't good, and that's why you don't get the lift. Um, and so someone could critique the form on it to help you for the next time. All of these things would be knowledge of performance. Okay? If we tie it back to the field goal kick that was missed here, um, we could say, oh, you need to account for the wind. Maybe that during the kick he didn't account for the wind and should have been lined up a little bit differently and oriented his force in a slightly different direction. That could be both kinematic or kinetic. Maybe he needs to change his initial foot positioning where the distance that he starts from the ball once it's uh, set right there. 
Or maybe he doesn't need to put as much power into the kick if he's up 10 yards in front of the field goal. So these would be things about the actual movement that are not just simply, well, you missed it or you made it. Okay? And so these things that have to do with the process in between the start and end of the movement, about the process, the pattern of movement, these would be knowledge of performance. Okay? Now, let's look at various practice schedules here. Okay? So, yeah, we can do either knowledge of results or knowledge of performance, but we can do them in different schedules. We can have continuous, faded, bandwidth, and summary feedback schedules. So what is continuous? Continuous feedback is really just when the augmented feedback is given after every trial or just during the trials. Okay? It doesn't have to be after it. It could be during it while the trial is going on. But basically, you're always giving it. Okay? Now, continuous feedback, when you're looking for later in learning stages, so once the person is, let's say, in the associative and especially autonomous stages of learning, you don't want to use continuous feedback. It could be okay in the initial stages where the person is a novice, but not once they get past that. Um, we want to actually taper off of the feedback as the person learns more and more. So continuous is just generally feedback after every trial. Faded feedback is when the earlier stages of the motor learning task, so the acquisition phase, has a high frequency of feedback, and then as the person learns it more and more, uh, they kind of taper off with the feedback, and so you get less and less feedback as the person gets more and more proficient at the motor skill. This is called faded feedback schedule. Then we have bandwidth feedback schedules. This is when feedback is only given if errors are greater than a certain level. So in some cases, you can have minor errors. You know, um, maybe that minor error is just the person, you know, just didn't get the lift. But maybe the person's not getting a lift because their form's bad. And maybe that bad form could cause an injury. Well, that might be clearly above a threshold where you'd want to give feedback. So you wouldn't give it if it was just one failed attempt. Uh, even if they had proper form, they just messed up, right? But if they have really bad form, that crosses the threshold. And then only for conditions like that would you give the feedback. So if you only give feedback when the errors are greater than a certain threshold, that would be a bandwidth schedule. And the last one is called summary schedule. This is when feedback is given for a group of trials. So um, if you just schedule the feedback where a person does you know, five trials of something and then you give feedback, that would be summary feedback. And finally, one more thing. What effect does frequency of augmented feedback have on the performance and retention of the motor skill? This is a very important thing. High frequency of feedback. This might be what we see in continuous uh, feedback schedule. High feedback leads to greater performance in the moment, okay? However, it does not necessarily uh, facilitate retention. We want to taper off of the feedback. And so as we get to lower levels of feedback, this tends to facilitate increased retention of the motor skill, okay? So we don't want to keep that feedback continuous the whole time. We want to fade it. We want to taper it off gradually. Maybe we'll apply some bandwidth feedback there, but we, the point is, is as the person gets more and more proficient as they go to the associative and autonomous stages of a motor skill, we want to decrease that frequency of feedback, augmented feedback, because that's what's going to facilitate long-term retention of the motor skill. All right? So hopefully this helped you understand augmented feedback, the two types of it, and the schedules. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you.